I've been doing this for many years now, and someday I'll Is actually this make thing way on? out of the city. Uh, well, yeah, hi, welcome to, welcome to GDC Hot Dog, episode three. This one is probably coming out in April, so it's we're three months into the year of GDC, guys. No, it would be, it's March now, so two, one episode yesterday, one, two, second episode yesterday would be April. Oh, you're right. This would be May. It's May, guys. It's May Hot Dog. Welcome to the May episode of GDC Hot Dog. Uh-huh. So what's shaking, everybody? What are you excited for? We're going to run out of ideas by the end of the week. That's not true at all. I, that's fine. Like, that's the essence of train hot dog. <laughs> well, but you just said this was GDC hot dog. Well, you got to keep your branding. Uh-huh. That sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah I wonder who said it. Uh-huh. Some jerk. Yeah. I don't like what, it. What does that guy know? Just jerk things. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag just jerk things. <laughs> Like, like oh Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> uh. Like, I wonder if we're going to be the, the last generation who not only knows what the save symbol is, but also what a pound sign is. What the save symbol is? Yeah, yeah the, you know what the save, it's a floppy it's, got, it's like a square with another rectangle okay. at the bottom See, and a circle you, in the middle. When you said the save icon, I thought, like, you mean the completely randomly picked image that is thematic for every game, that every game has a different symbol that it shows you when... No, I'm about, like, When you see this save. symbol... It means the game is saving. Yeah. Is this the right way? Yeah, this is towards the freeway. Okay, good. I was just like, oh, I don't remember this yesterday. It was hey, guys, why is it different. called a freeway if you have to pay a toll? It's, it's called the tollway. <laughs> I mean, most freeways you don't. There's very few toll freeways in Los Angeles, and the ones there are, you can just avoid. Why do you park on a driveway and drive on a parkway? Don't call parkways here. Don't be weird. <laughs> Stop making up words. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they called seagulls if they live at the bay? Shouldn't they be called bagels? Why do you go straight on the turnpike? <laughs> I can't handle it. Working hard or hardly working? No! No! <laughs> Kill me! I'm going to drive this into a pole. <laughs> oh, boy. Did you get a haircut or did you get them all cut? What cut? Get, get, get them all cut. Uh, get all uh, the hair. Okay. <laughs> Try, trying to think of like what what are some other like generic dub things somebody in an office might say to be oh, funny. Somebody has a case of the Mondays. Uh, that, yeah, that's another one. <laughs> I keep thinking of that like picture of the cat and it says hang in there baby. Oh no. That one, that, that, that poor cat. classic that cat, office poster. That cat is yeah, that like an existential terror for the rest of its well, short life. It's that, that that cat has been hanging there for twenty years. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's been doing what it says on the poster. It's I get in there, old baby. Cat now. It might be dead. It might. It might be dead. <laughs> yep. Dead cats on GDC hot dog. Uh, the dead cat is a really good item in the Mind of Isaac. Yeah, I never liked it. Really? It, that's the one that gives you one hit point, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it gives you nine hit points. Yeah, but not in a row. Right. It gives not, you nine not, lives, right? Yeah. Like you get one hit point, but you can die nine. Yeah. Well, you, no, you get one heart, which could be two hit points. No, yeah, yeah that's true. Depending on what so else you have. So my strategy at the Bidey of Isaac is just never get hit. It works out really well, which makes the black cat just an instant pickup, basically all the time, or the the cat. Head. Yeah. Makes it easy to turn into Guppy. Is that the cat? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. If you turn into Guppy, you've won the game. I've never won Winding of Isaac. What? I've played not, for many hours. Not even like the the, the mom? Nope. Wow, okay. <laughs> I've played for many, many hours and infuriated me. Either because of a combination of bad luck or I just suck. Whatever. How about Spelunky? I don't like roguelikes, that's what's a term. Spelunky is very much not a roguelike and is totally a platformer. Okay, it's so a roguelike. It's a randomly generated what? platform with. Even, even in elements. Derek Yu's book coming out this Thursday, you should buy Derek Yu's book. This Thursday, like two months after you're listening to it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he, he says it's not a roguelike. Why, why would you ever trust the creator's opinion about something? Well, because it's the same as my opinion. Yeah. What if you're wrong, though? Because you can't be it's wrong. Because it, it doesn't have turn-based movement. Neither does fucking uh, it's, it's, Mighty of Isaac. It's Mighty of Isaac still, isn't a roguelike. Mighty of still, Isaac is closer to the Legend of Zelda. Walk, no, like that's a Zelda that is It's like, still like Rogue. 
uh, in that in, in like, many respects in that anything with random generation is like Rogue in many respects it is like Rogue okay do you think Spelunky or Isaac is more of a Rogue like I mean eh. I haven't played Spelunky because it doesn't appeal to me at all but I've seen people play it it seems like like Spelunky the only way to learn is through constant death Spelunky to me is generated. closer to like let me finish bro uh, let me finish that's what I'm saying is that you only learn through constant death, or you can cheat and look up stuff online, but otherwise, like, that mechanic of, like, learning by dying is very roguelike to me, and stuff's randomly generated. Might be paying class to lose the term. But... No, that's, that's, that's very much one of the things about, that makes it a roguelike, yes. Yeah. So bo- both Spelunky and, even more so, Isaac have permanent progress that, like, you can make. That's, it's not, I didn't say it was exactly rogue. Right, but I think that I think that that's like a major no-no in terms of roguelikes is like allow you to can, like there is no permadeath really. If you're talking to Keith, Keith Bergen, also it's not tile based. What would what would you call it then? I would call it a platformer with like some roguelike inspired elements or like some randomly generated elements. What about? This, so, Isaac. I just want to point out, this is not an interesting conversation, which makes yeah. it perfect for Train Hot Dog. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I knew I'm it was I'm doing my best, man. <laughs> Good job. No, I know it's not an interesting conversation. You would never want to listen to a bunch of dorks argue in the car about What is rogue like? About, yeah. def, def, about any definitions, frankly. Well, unless you're like a linguist, then... Hi. <laughs> you're, not, you're an English person, though. You're not like actually like studying language. Okay, but like, guess how more. guess how much we like if we go to the Oxford English Dictionary and read the etymology of a word for fun all you, the time. You could do that. That would be great. <laughs> okay, do you have a copy of the Oxford English Dictionary here? No, but I can go on my phone to etymonline.com. That's not as good. No, no, that's what we're doing. That's not worth it. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm gonna plug in roguelike into etymonline and see what comes out. Hold this. <laughs> <laughs> this is some high quality. Crap. That make it a very different game from Zelda, uh, because that would not be. Isn't that the game that you wanted? You wanted. uh, You said you wanted somebody to make a new game like Zelda One. Yeah, and Binding of Isaac was pretty cool, but it wasn't that game. So what? What do you want from a Zelda One remake? Or or like? I'm I'm going to Edom Online right now and typing in roguelike. Multitask, right? And not not on swipe. I can't. (laughs) Swipe. Oh man, okay. I was I was working off the basis that it would come back with some sort of autocorrected thing. It just said no matching items found. So this is just a complete bust. Oh, I'm disappointed now. You're right. It's not as good as the OED. The what? I wonder if the OED here holds this. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can get the OED. Do on I need my to hold phone. it now? No, you need to drive. No, the, someone might say that. So you know. Let's see if I can get the OED on my phone. Okay. All right. www.oed.dictionary that, I bet that is a TLD now. TLD? Top level domain. Oh, interesting. Like dot right. condos. Dot corn. Uh-huh. Dot corn? Uh-huh. Is that a real domain name? Uh-huh. Hot damn. Okay, roguelike in the OED. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, is a sub-definition for rogue, which is pretty good. Uh-huh. Uh, rogue, roguelike, adjective, first use, 1636. Awesome. By Jay Trussell in the uh, Continued Collected English History Number 4. 
Seeing the rabble so ragged and rogue-like, it was held no discretion for the king to venture his person among them. Then in 1789, O Equiano, in the interesting... Oh, okay, so Odala, that's Odala Equiano's interesting narrative of the life of Odala Equiano. Uh, number, I guess, volu number one, vol V120. Roguelike, he never told me that he had gotten a guinea from me to procure my escape. 1864, W.D. Lato, Tamakis Bodkin, 22, page 234. I was an alien and an outcast on the Warls Hay Road, humbly craving his pardon for having run away in the roguelike manner I had done. I, I just want to point out that an escape is something you procure. Uh huh. That's great. <laughs> uh, and then in 1998, the Sunday Mirror, uh, 8 November 9. I don't know what that means. Uh, Dylan, whose roguelike character is played by Lauren Krantic initially catches Nima's eye. So, this is roguelike the adjective. Yeah, that's what I said at the very beginning. So, we're getting a little off base I'm here. I'm really, really happy is, with this W.D. Lato. Is the base that we need cash to pay for the toll? Um, it was four dollars again. Uh -huh. uh, Does it change, or is it just four dollars every day? No, it depends the time of day you're going. Like, if you're going at, like, rush hour, it's probably, like, nine bucks. And, like, the old <sighs> Gaylord just places you, they're all like, I need your firstborn. I want to I want to read this one again because of the way that it's it's spelling is so good. I can't hear the spelling in your voice. Are you sure? Let you, me read it again. You can spell it out. I was alien on an outcast on the Wilds Hay Road, humbly craving his pardon for having run away in the roguelike oh, manner I beautiful. had done. Thank you. I'm, that accent is not an accent. That is how it is spelled, with apostrophes and no ends on the end of words and everything. Cast spelled O O T C A S T. Listeners, can you look? I, I can't see Justin's phone, so can you look this word up in the OED and tell me if he's full of shit? <laughs> Ootcast. Yeah, look up Ootcast. This is the 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 trade hot dog Ootcast. Yeah, we can do that. I'm putting Ootcast into the OED now. Three months into the year of GDC, guys. <laughs> We're ex I'm excited. <laughs> this is only the second day of GDC, though. So they're, we're, like, coming to them from the past. Did you mean outcast, uh -huh. netcast, nowcast, offcast, or ooblast? Ooh, ooh, blast. I meant ooblast. All right. Oh, I hear ping. Someone getting messages. Is yeah. that reader mail by a chance? Oh, man. <laughs> ooblast. German. Et uh, etymology, a uh, borrowing from German, ooblast. Uh... Frequency and current use, two out of uh, seven. That's a weird scale. This writer, this writer writes, this is cool if morbid. Http colon slash slash www.iflscience. That, that reader is suspiciously uh, texting you. Yes. It's a writer. It's a writer. Oh, interactive body map. What really gives you cancer? Oh, apparently means oocyte. It's a, it's a synonym for an egg mother cell. Is that a kind of stone? Which gives rise to a mature ovum by meiosis. Yeehaw. There's abundant advice out there on what you should or shouldn't eat, drink, swallow, or stand next to to avoid cancer. Oh, like the sun. But it's often lacking in evidence, and the jumble of messages can be confusing. And here's a... This is really long. I don't want to read it all. Okay. Screw it. Just, just I, w I totally would if it was just train hot dog. Oh, okay. But you want to... You want to... Say, I should go to the... Uh, I, should, I should tell all the readers about that new Tyrannosaurus that they found. That's exciting, right? There's sure. a new Tyrannosaurus? That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, they discovered this new... I'm trying to see if I can find the name. Yeah, don't worry about it. Let's just uh, it's, talk it's, about the new Tyrannosaurus. So, it's much smaller than a normal Tyrannosaurus. Aww, because it's, it's like... It's like uh, 90 million years earlier. Okay. Cool. Oh, if you eat 50 grams of processed meat per day, your risk of bowel cancer is 20% higher. Anyway, so, like, what is it? Like, 100, 200 million years ago, Tyrannosaurs were just, with, like, that size, and then there was a huge gap in the fossil record, and then suddenly Tyrannosaurus was Tyrannosaurus rex and giant. Wait, how big were they before the gap? Like 600 pounds. So, it's like a really big bear, basically. 
Well, a big, wasn't a big bear like a ton? So yeah, there was this like 30 million yeah. year Like in the Revenant, gap. that bear was pretty heavy. I didn't actually see the Revenant. Okay, so it's called Timurlengia. It was three to four meters long and weighed about 170 to 270 kilograms. So it was roughly the size of a big horse. Huh. Okay. 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 So it took longer. So this uh, this this fossil falls into that like 30 million year gap where there wasn't any record of Tyrannosaurus, and on one end it was small and on the other end it was big. Right. If it was but, horse size, could you ride it? Yes, you could ride it even if it wasn't horse size. Let's be honest. You well, can ride in its it, stomach. If it's too small, you don't want to ride it. And yeah, if it's too big, you definitely anyway, don't want to ride it. Anyway, this Tyrannosaurus is important because even though it's still small, it has the same, like, ear and brain cavities as the larger Tyrannosaurus, which indicates that before Tyrannosaurus got big, it got smart, and that it used its smarts to muscle the other dinosaurs out of the, uh... Out of the competition. I wasn't aware that Tyrannosaurus was considered a particularly intelligent dinosaur. Well, c- clearly this... Fo- I mean, the fossil record is right now indicating that it rel- was relatively intelligent. Mm-hmm. You know, you only need to be relatively intelligent. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Like, we always talk about how... Yeah. Well, so anyway, point is... It, uh, because, yeah, when, when, tyrann- when, when Tyrannosaurs first showed up on the scene, like, they were uh, underneath the Allosaurus for their spot on the food chain, but when the climate changed in the, what is it, Cretaceous period, the Allosaurus did not adapt and died out, which allowed the Tyrannosaurus to get bigger and uh, become the apex predator. And they're sure so, it's not just a juvenile Tyrannosaurus? It's t- way too early. Okay. Makes sense. But, uh, That's interesting. Yeah, as it turns out, much like humans, Tyrannosaurus got smart and then got dominant. Humans did it by making tools, Tyrannosaurus did it by getting swole. <laughs> Whatever works. What if you got swole and had tools? I, I know plenty of people that have done that. It's They're true. They're probably more likely to be able to fight off a bear than somebody who is not swole. Yeah, it's probably true. Where did, what's the etymology of swole? Let's put swole into the OED. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's short for swollen. Like, when you get a boil. Oh. <laughs> like in your ear. Like a little, a little ball in your ear, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep, like that. I wonder what you would call that. I wonder if there's a website you could go to for information about those little balls. Okay. Is swole is a noun and a verb. I'm gonna go for the verb. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's it's a sub sub definition for swell. So oh. I'm scrolling down to it. Gee, that's swell. I would have been a great 1950s child on a stereotypical television show. Yeah. Play with jacks and marbles. Being and racist to black children. Yes, absolutely. No, I'm not actually racist against anybody. So. But you would have been oh, in the 50s. Oh, that makes me sad. Okay, maybe no. I would be a really well, terrible th- child Think the about 50s. Think about this. Yeah. 50 years from now, mm-hmm. future Rachel, mm-hmm. what, what biases are you going to regret re- that you had now? I'm really racist against robots. Yeah. Oh, you're really gonna regret that soon. Yeah, probably. I'll be like one of the first ones to get stuck, stuck stuffed into the little like you know battery pods where they drain your bodily fluids to power their war machines. Uh, there, I'll let you. That's I a euphemism for death. <laughs> so swell is the past tense of swell. Uh huh. Right. Really? Maybe. It's really hard to search on page in the OED because it's a Thanks. million collapsed Here you go. windows. Dollar bag. Collapsed? Like in Detroit? Yeah, so the, the way the OED works is that it's a bunch of, like, subheadings that start out collapsed and can be expanded. That's how they formatted their pages. Like, they don't show you the etymology unless you click on the etymology thing, and then it all just spills out a huge list of every way that word has been used since the first time it was ever used by a person. I see. Okay. Because, other one, like, why would you want to load all that stuff if you don't have to? But the only thing you can load is all of it? Yeah. It's it's all or nothing. You can't just be like, okay, give me the the third usage of this in your etymology list. Right. I don't know why you would ever want that. Or how about just, like, usages, like, since 1960? Nope. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at. I bet swole, someone's written a grease monkey script to that. Swole on Urban Dictionary. Or a bookmarklet. The Urban Dictionary is probably the second best reference tool after the OED. 
I feel like half the things Urban Dictionary are just like teenagers that make up words and then make up definitions. Well, that's why you can upload okay, so, and downvote. Okay, so here's, here's good. Uh, I, I went to Swole on Urban Dictionary, but Urban Dictionary has some awful phone adware that immediately redirects you to King.com. King. What is King.com? Come on, Jim. <laughs> what? Jim, you should know King.com. They're, you're like spirit animal. Oh. <laughs> I'm just thinking of Return of Kings. Swole. Oh, as it, that's that weird MRA site, right? Uh-huh, yeah. No, no, we're talking about a game that is based around middle-aged women who are crushing candies. Gross. Yeah. You know the gun run is, uh, <laughs> is on Urban Dictionary? The gun run? Yeah. I don't even know what that means. Is that a live streamer? He, his name is uh, Justin, uh, I'm blanking on his last name because I don't remember it. He... He works, not too many he works at Twitch. Okay. But he, he was a... Uh, he, before he worked at Twitch, he was a longtime KOL player, and he, he worked with me at Cold Front. Huh. And uh, in, like, I don't know, 2006, maybe, he wrote into the, the KOL radio show, like, 101 consecutive questions, and they read and answered all of them in a row. Like... In one day, yeah, just in one in one go, one show. Cool. So he was immortalized on Urban Dictionary. Wow, as the guy who wrote in one hundred and one, and then went went to work at Twitch. Yeah. So if you uh, if you go to Urban Dictionary, you can read uh, Justin Ignacio is his name. He's he's uh, he's younger than I am, which makes me sad. He's making a pile of money from Twitch. I yeah. hate when people are younger than I am. I hate it when they're younger than me and more successful than me. I don't hate younger people. No, I just like every younger. I think person. he's like okay. Three well, we're than we're I both am. younger than you, so <laughs> I can it's feel the seething rage. It's not that we're young; it's that Jib is old. <laughs> no, I'm pretty young, young at heart. That's oh. what I just said, <laughs> right? Maybe. I don't think it is actually. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have, but you've got the heart of a child. Uh-huh. Me, absolutely. The liver of a child. No, I have the liver of like a 50 year old alcoholic. Uh huh. I'm putting it through its paces, especially this week during GDC. The, ki- the kidneys of an, of, of an alcoholic. No, no, my kidneys are good. The liver, though, is a little, a little worn out. It's you know, cool, the, that half a, half a kidney can do the work of two kidneys. Yeah, but my kidneys are very functional. So I'm, I'm proud of them. Good They're job, all- kidneys. <laughs> I'll drink some more water to keep me from getting horrible stones. We're all buddies here. They'll stone you when you're driving in the car. <laughs> There's, they'll stone you when you're sleeping. They'll stone, stone, when, you're stone you're when you're awake. <laughs> this is Good. the worst song ever. <laughs> Bob Dylan would be so proud. <laughs> this is the best episode yet. Is it really? Well, it does help that today I'm actually like awake instead of half dead. So I'm actually... I wouldn't say contributing. Are you <laughs> are you related to Dumbledore, the half dead? <laughs> the near dead Dumbledore. We gotta merge here. You they need to they let call this him both. I am letting them in. I'm just going they call him both. Low, I don't know what else to do. Okay. The yeah, if you let dead. if you let them in too much, this person next to you will get in front. Exactly, and we can't be having that. Are there merging three lanes at once, and that's why this is so awful? I think so. Okay, I think that's what's that's happening. That's exactly what's happening right now. I, Have I, you ever played like StarCraft? It's like that. That's a boat, right? How many stars did you craft in the game StarCraft? At least six. I wasn't very good at it. Uh-huh. You know that the... I think the number one use oh, of StarCraft okay. You two, don't need to let the person have for yeah. all. Just get up, get up in there. I think that the number one, like, play case of StarCraft 2 today is not actually playing StarCraft 2, but playing games in the arcade like Warcraft 3 mods were... I, I hope you're right. I'm pretty sure that that's true. Because, like, unless they're actively releasing actual new content for that game, all of Blizzard's marketing for StarCraft Two is, like, hey, look at the arcade, we're having contest arcade, content creators come, like, we'll promote your, your games in our arcade. Uh, so They want StarCraft Two to be a platform. So that's interesting, but I haven't heard of any of these games, so they're not doing a very good job promoting them. Well, they promote them within their own Blizzard ecosystem. Okay. So, so you're uh, not in that ecosystem. A, a game that I have heard of, for example... Is Defense is, of the Agents, right? Yeah, Defense of the Ancients, which 
which was a game made within a Blizzard product that did very well outside of that product. Yeah. Like, in mimetically, I'm, mimetically speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, well, considering that's like the only thing Valve does these days, it's obviously doing very well. No, no, they, they make Steam. They, they oh, make, okay. So they, they, they make they, trading they, cards, yeah. They, yeah, they make trading cards, so I, they're like Wizards of the Coast then. It's like Wizards of the Coast. And but Blizzard, they, like, right? Blizzard also makes trading cards. That's true. They also have a game where you, like, they have a game that is a ripoff of a game that was a ripoff of a game that was a mod for their game. So it yes. tenses, I think what, what Blizzard is trying to do is get people to make the next Dota in their game. Yeah, no, that's that's clearly what they're doing. Yeah, that, that, that's what they're hoping for. There, like there are actually a number of really good games in the StarCraft arcade. What's an example? Uh, I really like. So there are a bunch of tower defense games, obviously, because, like, that's just a thing that has always existed in Blizzard modding, right? Like, yeah. Warcraft reinvented tower defense. Yeah. There's a, but there's a, really co- a cool game called Lottery well, that, that, I could have said that. I, I've heard of tower defense games as well. Go so on. So, there's a good, uh, there's a good game called Lottery Defense, which is kind of like a, t- I mean, it, it is a tower defense game, but all of the things that you build are won from a lottery, and you can combine them up into bigger and better towers that function differently. And have right. Been, um, and, you can, and it's a multiplayer tower defense game, so you can trade your units with other players. So, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I'm trying to think. There's a... Uh, like, some of the... It's, it's weird because some of the, like, really good ones have become official Blizzard mods. Huh. So they made one that was, uh, like, a Left 4 Dead-style holdout survival game where you just built a base and it was nighttime and, and they had a bunch they like created a bunch of custom Zerg units that only ever appear in that mode that have special properties and are named like Left 4 Dead guys there's like the, the Choker yeah and the the Stank the Stank? yeah, yeah the Stank what, and, a, what yeah. an unfortunate person the uh <laughs> Kaboomer I think we might I think we're definitely past the era where people outside of a games community care about games created within that community for that community. Right. Um, and I'm not sure what... Because there's so many games just a dollar on Steam. I, I think yeah. that that's part of it, yeah. Like, I, I think what maybe what it is is that um, now all the people who used to have to, if they wanted to make a... <coughs> a first-person shooter variant or what have you, they would have to make a Quake mod. Right. Um, I uh, what else they are, could now go make something completely on their own in Unity and actually sell it. Yeah. And I think that's where all the talent has gone. So, Blizzard has said, like, a year or two ago at BlizzCon that they were looking into, like, they're trying to figure out what the best way to allow people to sell those games on the arcade is for yeah. really good ones, but it hasn't materialized. Well, I bet they don't want to do what, like, Bethesda did on the... Yeah, Bethesda. It, Bethesda's entirely reasonable proposal to allow people to make money from their creative work. Yeah. Yeah. How dare they? Yeah, but there's a there's one that's called Star Jeweled, which is just a implementation of Bejeweled. In StarCraft? In StarCraft. It's amazing. With its own custom interface and everything. But uh, it's also a... So every time you clear gems, you get some energy points from that. Like, the, the bigger your combo, the more you'll get. And you can spend that on units that just march down a single lane and push. It's it's sort of like a one-lane MOBA, I guess. Except for you don't play as a hero. You just can choose what unit, what creeps are spawning. That's pretty funny. Based on your... And you can cast spells using your energy as well, like uh, AoE damage aura around a dude or a healing on a unit or whatever. Right. And you can play that against other people to see who is better at both playing Bejeweled and casting spells and healing their units at the same time, so it's a, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. I like that one a lot. Yeah, that sounds good. That yeah, sounds like that's, a good I think game. that's my favorite of the of the official Blizzard ones. Are there any successful not free-to-play tower defense games? I'm just curious. Tower defense games? Yeah, because uh, you talked yeah. about that earlier, and I def- definitely back yes. in the Warcraft 3 days, I spent a lot of time playing like, tower yes, defense games. Yes, I can think of two off the top of my head, and I'm sure there are more. Okay. Um, Dylan's Rolling Western and the sequel, I don't remember what its name is, are both tower defense games. What what system oh. is that for? Those are for 3DS. They okay. were made by Nintendo. 
and uh, Steam World Tower Defense, which was the prequel to Steam World Dig, which did, did really well. I don't know how the Steam World TD did, but it clearly sold well enough that they made another one. Okay. They made another Steam World game, That's and then Steam tier. World Heist is not a tower defense game, but is a third. Like every Steam World game has been in a different genre. Yeah. Which is cool. I, I played Steam World Dig and I loved it. And then I was looking at I saw Steam World Heist and I was like, maybe I'll play that. It's a heist game. And then I found out game. that it's not for me. Oh, is it not? And then uh, Crystal Bearers Tower Defense was a one that Square Enix put out that was uh, Final Fantasy themed that I think did pretty well. Okay, it's good to hear because I've always liked those style of games, but it's like um, all Defense the ones... Grid was huge, did really well. Oh, it had Portal DLC. Interesting. Defense Grid: The Awakening. That was like one. Of, I don't like tower defense games, but that was one of the few that I liked because it was funny. The last one I played was um, Sanctum Two, but it, I okay. it made me really horrifically motion sick, and I never could figure out why. I think there's a paid version of that Balloons TD game that probably sold some copies. Well, Balloons is functional, but it's not that fun. Sure, but people know it, so they'll pay for it. That's true. This is like an actual podcast now. This is not a good trade hot dog. Uh, yeah, we need to find something else to look up. Oh, something <laughs> stupid to talk about. Um... Something stupid by, uh... Oh, Frank Sinatra and someone else. I think you're making up songs again. Button Willow McKittrick. No, hold on. I'll... Dude, that's like my favorite thing to see on the five, like on the drive. I just see that and I take a picture every time and I send it to friends who think it's funny too. And I'm like, look, <laughs> it's so important. It's like such a charming fucking little hobbit name. Like, what the hell is Button Willow McKittrick? Yeah. As far as I can tell, it's just a little tiny town with like five houses in it. It's like a farming thing. It's, it's a delightful pair of words. It is. It's actually like just four syllables just jammed together. That make no sense outside of their own, but put together, they're just, it's like, aww, <laughs> yay. Here, here's, here's a, here's a, th- a something stupid video for you called something stupid. I mean, I don't want to watch a video. You don't need to, Jim. All right. I'll, I'll feel left out, though. You can hear it. Oh, uh, we're going to get content ID, no, guys. It's, it's short enough that you're uh, within fair use. The whole thing is fair use? Yeah. Okay. Go. All right, I mean, that was entertaining for me. How yeah, about how about, about you, listeners? I'm not entertained at all, so I guess because you say. didn't watch uh, Frank Sinatra Fusur Ado Da Nicole Kidman out of a window. I, I it's true because I'm, I am motorizing right now. <laughs> I mean, we're not moving very much. I'm not gonna watch a video while I'm in the car. See, you said that I that you were very very susceptible to bad influences, but clearly this Absolutely. is not true. I mean, I am, but I'm not, I'm not that dope. You're like, hey, take another shot. But like, absolutely, I'll take uh-huh. that shot. This and then you'll good. shoot yourself. Yes, or somebody else, you know. Yeah, what's that weird triangle building over there? Anyone know? That's the, that's the American triangle movement. man. Oh, okay, because I don't know if you guys have seen this I'm picture. I'm pretty sure that that's a wizard. Let me finish, dude. <laughs> Like, um, in North Korea, they have some sort of, like, abandoned hotel. They, like, built half of it. Basically, like, the outside, there's nothing on the inside. And they're like, wait, we have no money to finish this. So it's just this weird, creepy pyramid in the middle of, like, somewhere in North Korea. Yeah, I remember reading about that. It looks very similar to that, but it's... The other one in North Korea is beefier. And not as... It's, it's a lot more frightening. Cause it's, like, the tallest building in this, like, waste of these, like, ramshackle buildings. Uh-huh. That that's building, just, like, a weird thing in the middle of a city, so... That building looks like a, a wizard with a... Hat, pointy hat and then a long white beard coming down the middle. Oh, uh, yeah, that's like it. Yeah, I see that. He's disapproving. His mouth is just a flat line. Yeah, well, I'd be disapproving like too his, if I look at this bridge. Like his heartbeat, a flat line. A flat line. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a camera up there, like, watching us? I can't see it. Big Brother is wizarding you. Alcatraz. Is that Alcatraz? Yeah, okay. On a clear day, you can see Alcatraz. You know, you can learn a lot from Lydia. Who? Lydia, oh Lydia. Lydia the Tattooed Lady? Exactly. Yeah. What yeah. are you talking about? Lydia the Tattooed Lady. I, I don't know what that is. It's a Tom Lehrer song. Oh. No, it, it is very much not a Tom Lehrer song. It's a Tom Lehrer song. He never sang that song. He, he 
totally that saying was, that. No, that was Groucho Marx. Okay, they have the same voice. <laughs> okay, good. Also, uh, you know what I bet it was? My mom had a mixtape when I was a kid of Tears for Fears and Depeche Mode songs. <laughs> okay, now you can't tell them apart. Exactly. And that's why you think well, I, I, is I, I came to be able to tell them apart through years of study. <laughs> okay. With the with the mugs of Depeche. <laughs> yes. And so I bet the same thing happened. Like I bet Groucho Marx like feet like guested on a Tom Lehrer LP or nope. some shit. Nope. I have every Tom Lear album. And you never sang that song, really? Nope. Got it from my dad. I can hear it in his voice. I'm sure. Uh, are you thinking of Michael Feinstein, who also covered that song? I don't know who that is. I don't know any of these people. Um, Michael Feinstein, like, keeper of the Great American Songbook, preserver of music, and, like, famed music- musician slash historian. Okay, that's cool. He's a cool guy. He sounds like a cool yeah, guy. Yeah, you can, you can go to his nightclub in New York, and he'll play. He only lets, like, 100 people in every night. What okay. an asshole. He could let more people in. I don't think more people would fit in the space. We can ask the fire marshal about that. <laughs> uh, Is that this cruise ship that was on the other side of the bridge yesterday? I don't know. That Is might that be the DC cruise ship. Is that a cab ship? that has... A television mounted on the top of it that's displaying it, an advertisement. I don't think it's a cab. I think it's just like a weird it's car. Just, it's, it's just an asshole deciding to show us an ad the whole time we drive. A jerk. Yeah, there's that cruise ship. Is that building that's sticking out of those trees the Exploratorium? No. Okay. Hey, I see the Golden Gate Bridge from here. Yes, it's very red. But I think it might once have been. Okay. Now it's the Exploratoriums on the waterfront. Okay. So. They say Alcatraz was impossible to escape from, but it's not that far from land. It's really cold water, though. Like, really cold. And it's also, like, not a pleasant swim. It's pretty choppy. Like, that's probably a couple of miles of swimming. So really? You, like, you think it's swimming. a couple miles from there to the land? Yeah, possibly, yeah. yeah. It doesn't look like it. I mean, yeah, but we're kind of far away. Yeah, we can't trust our ape eyes. No, I mean, we're good at depth perception, but not, like, we're bad at judging distance and volume. Didn't... Like, aren't there a number of famed escapes from Alcatraz, including that movie Escape from Alcatraz? Oh, it's famed because it's so rare. That's yeah. like, like when you see something in the newspaper, you know it's not going to happen to you. You know that there's an entire Wikipedia article that we could read on the on the next episode. Uh, or this one. No, I don't know if we have enough time. We're going to be stuck in traffic for like 15 minutes. It's a list of jailbreaks accomplished by heist of helicopter or something like that. That I should tell the person I'm meeting for lunch that, I, that I'm not going to be there at noon. I'm, we left super on time, but this traffic is just, I don't know what's up. I'm sorry, guys. We left really early today. Uh, we left around the same time we left last night. I thought we left sure. earlier. List of helicopter prison escapes. There we go. A helicopter prison escape is made when an inmate is taken by, from a prison by means of a helicopter. The helicopter's vertical lift is ideal for prison escapes because of the limited space to land and take off in prisons. This list includes prisoner escapes where a pr- helicopter was used in an attempt to free prisoners from a place of internment, a prison, or cor- correctional facility. And there's a list of actual escapes and uh, fictional escapes. I want to know about the fictional escapes. Okay. Fictional escapes... Uh, in The Prisoner, there were two. The episode is The Arrival and The Schizoid Man. In the movie Breakout. In the book Superman, Last Son of Krypton. In the TV show The Prisoner. I guess that's the Australian version of The Prisoner. In the movie Cry Baby. In the movie American Sky Adosh. In the episode Codename Dragonfly of Walker, Texas Ranger movie Spy Game, the episode The Final Showdown of Walker, Texas Ranger, the episode Body Count of CSI by Abby. Oh, this, this place is the easiest to escape. Is that a tree stump? Yeah, yeah, I was looking at that. I think it's a redwood tree stump, but it looks like it's been <laughs> you say a... this place is the easiest to escape from? Yeah. Like, someone, like, shipped a tree stump to their startup. Like, we Weird. cut, we, we killed this tree That's for like our a, company. That is a 
massive tree stump. That is a redwood a, tier yeah. tree stump. I think it actually is a redwood that's been poached. Because um, redwoods just driving have these, down the street. Well, these redwoods have really dense burrs at the base of their... Um, uh-huh. Put that at the show notes. Picture of that. Anyway, yeah, um, they, if I can people get a good one. like to chainsaw them out and make furniture out of it because it's really beautiful and really interesting, ornate, like swirls and interesting textures and colors. And that one's blue, it's been chainsawed to hell, so that's what I'm guessing happens. Mm. People kill redwoods all the time you know, for the shit. You'd be, I feel like if it were poached, they wouldn't want it just driving down the middle of the street in well, San it's Francisco. Dead. Like you could tell how the, the sides have been like chainsawed to hell. Right. And I think it's like it's dead. Might as well sell they it. They can catch you. If you, it happens if you, a lot, but I, I'm thinking that tree itself has been posted. It's chop out sides. I don't know, but in either case, that's a really, really big tree stump. Very clear from redwood. That is probably wider in diameter than I am tall. It's bigger than this car. I don't know if that's true. And then it was pretty small. It's like a clown car. <laughs> I don't know this one. Okay, because I'm like, do, do people live on there? Do I don't like... know any building except for the Transamerica building. Okay, well that's a good one to know because I, I think every time I'm here, I don't you what live that in is. Frisco? Shouldn't you know these things? Oh. What? What? I don't live in I don't live in Frisco, and no, <laughs> neither does anyone else. Uh-huh. That's not a real place. Uh huh. Like making up words again. Uh huh. What does Pink Floyd have to say about that? <laughs> Yo, Pink Floyd, well, great. Can be wrong about things. Sorry. The Sid Barrett era does not count. 1970. What does Jack Kerouac oh, have man, to say I about that? I turned off my phone. That would be such a good angle for that stump. Oh well. Sorry. All right, I'm posting a shit. Okay, so remember, of a stump remember, uh, t- I guess it would be two episodes for the listeners when I mentioned that billboard that was half Zootopia, half the Jungle Book. Today it is all of the Jungle Book. Like no, they finished Zootopia. putting it up. I heard Zootopia is like a really intense movie about race relations. I don't really know anything about it, and I like not know anything before I see movies. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I mean, know things about it. That's all I know. Okay, that's more than I knew. I, I, also, I know it's called Zootopia. Yeah, that's, I actually and that saw it has, a movie. And that it has a uh, region lock, uh, region locked uh, furry fursonas in it. Yeah, I saw a movie once. I didn't know the name of or the director. Cool. I didn't know anything. Yeah, it was great. What was the movie? Um, it was Zero Theorem, which was directed by... Fuck, um... Oh, I know that guy. No, yeah, fuck shit. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. I really like his work. What a, what a hero. By, um, damn, damn it, from Monty Python. I can't remember his Eric name. Eric Idle? No, not Eric Idle. Um, Terry Gilliam. Th- Terry Gilliam, thank you. Uh, John Cleese. No, it's Terry Michael Gilliam. Michael Palin. You're listening just to Python members, so I wanted the animator specifically. The Ringo Starr. <laughs> He wasn't in Monty Python. I was listening to British Pete people. Best. <laughs> Queen Victoria. Anyway, at a good Lord movie. Byron. Come on, you gotta play this game with us. Listen, British people. <laughs> uh, uh, Jack the Ripper. Okay, good. good yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a left turn lane, right? Admiral. Admiral Taylor. <laughs> Commodore Perry. That's what I was going for. <laughs> Uh, Charles Darwin. <laughs> Spaghetti. Uh, that's Chinese. <laughs> uh, uh, um, hold on. I know another British person. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> what are we listening again? <laughs> oh, it's the animator for Monty Python. Yeah, yeah, anyway, I saw his last movie without knowing what it was called or what it was about. Or anything. Terry Jones. Was, that was the one that we didn't get. It was a feat of ignorance. Going the right way again, right? We're on Howard Street right now. Yeah. And we're going to Sutter Stockton, and I'm not 100% sure how to get there from here, but I got us pretty far. Sutter Kane. I, I think it's good. I think it's good. What's good? Uh, the direction we're going in. Okay, but I might need some guidance afterwards. Um, Idris Elba. That's not a name. He's British, right? He is British. Isn't, isn't that David Bowie's wife? <laughs> uh, did you know that uh, Davy Jones... You know, be, uh, not, you know how okay. You know how David Bowie's real name is Davy Jones, right? Yeah. 
and you know how you know why he is named Davy Jones. He's one of the monkeys. Like, yeah, right? like, yeah. Like, confused monkeys. Did you know that uh, film director Duncan Jones is David Bowie's son? No, I don't know who that is. I did not know he that. He directed the movie Moon. Oh, that's a good movie. And he's directing the upcoming Warcraft movie. Oh, it's gonna be good. Uh. Like, it's gonna be good. It's got special effects by Weta. How could it be bad? Oh, okay. Well then, pardon me all to hell. Yeah. Does it have Sam Rockwell in it? I don't know. It has that dude from the History Channel Vikings show. I don't. Oh, that's a show. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Called Vikings. I don't know. I've never watched it. Oh, Gord, Gord and his wife watched the first season and said it had a lot of dudes getting raped in it. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. That sounds like something I really want to watch. Yep. Who is? Thanks. Yep. Dudes, not not ladies. Oh, okay. Only dudes. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's. Ugh. I was like, well, I guess that's a that's a brave twist on that particular trope. Yeah. It's gonna really sell it to the the alternative rape fetishist. Yeah. Uh, is that a joke about rape? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, okay. Yep. You've lost your last listeners <laughs> with that. What? We don't have listeners. I, man, what about Murph from the Space Coast? Um, he hasn't sent... Murph hasn't sent in a writer mail in, like, six months, so... He's dead. I'm pretty sure we've lost Murph. Did he, uh... Did he move from the Space Coast? Maybe he's just Murph now. Uh, Maybe. I, I can I could ask him. I, I, hey he, Murph, did you move? I could no. He hangs out at uh, Gary's Slack. Gary's Slack. Really? <laughs> yeah. Who's Gary? We know. We actually can contact this. I guess I could just call the number. Yeah. No. He he was like, he was like, oh hey, just so you know, I'm the Murph from the Space Coast. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to Trade Hot Dog, and you guys do a really good job with that. And I was like. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much the correct response. This is like that. a this is like two or three months ago. Yeah, that's awesome. It's uh, Murph Murphy. He uh, and he he guests on some Duck Feet shows. Um, that's awesome and that's yep. incredible. I didn't like I I would never have known that it was the same dude. Wait, is this? There's the Gold Club again. We go get some. What did, what did your friend say at the uh, Australian thing? No, oh no, no he, he said that they that they have the best dining establishment in uh in San Francisco. <laughs> Maybe it's one and of then I places. told her that I told him that you were familiar with the Gold Club and had already vetoed a visit when we walked past it, and he was like, "Oh, you should have just like acted incredulous." She was like, "Oh, I thought it, it's a strip club. I thought that it was just a like a like a fancy restaurant. I heard that they had like a really fine dining. You know, it's like men sitting around like smoking cigars and drinking brandy. Like a you know, it's a gentleman's club." And eating a steak off of a stripper's butt. No, that's that's the opposite of what you're supposed to pretend not to know. Oh. You're supposed to just not understand I'm that it's a strip a club. That's all. I'm just ruining it. There's that uh that grilled cheese place. What where? Right, right there, back there. We drove past I'm I'm focusing on not plowing We have to things. go before six o'clock today because they close at six. Uh like a, well, I don't know. There's gonna be food at the thing we're going to, so I wasn't planning on eating. Oh, at Asher's thing? Mm-hmm. Let's just name drop Asher. Asher Fleming. Yeah. Okay. Skateboards a lot. Oh, he's Asher. He's the new kid. He likes to skateboard. Asher skateboards? <laughs> I, I don't think so. Oh. I'm, this busted I'm really sad that, that that didn't get any response. I, yeah, I didn't get it. Uh, did you ever watch uh, Derek Comedy? I don't know. I, I don't even know what that oh, is. Oh, man, you missed out. I'm sorry. What Are year, you sorry? What year was that? Derek, um, 2002? This is the longest episode of GDC Hot Dog yet. How, How long, long have we been, uh, rambling? 48 minutes. Are you serious? Oh. Derek, Derek Comedy... History. Just read it aloud. Just read out what you're... Is an internet sketch comedy group from New York University. The group has a large YouTube following and was mentioned in Rolling Stone in July 2006. Their 2000, or 2007. Their 2006 video, Bro Rape, has garnered over 10 million views. Oh, They've that released one. videos online, performed sold out shows at venues such as New York's Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, produced the 2009 film Mystery Team, and have appeared on national television. Uh, I don't know if people are stopping here or what's happening. Okay, this guy's going forward. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. This is just 
badness because some people are stopped because it's a valet zone, all the people are turning right, and... Uh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Donald Glover got his start in that. Or really? part of it. Huh. You know, Childish Gambino. Don't um, know what that is. Is Donald, wait, Donald Glover and Childish Gambino are the same person? Yeah. I don't, know, know. I don't know what Childish Gambino is. He's a fake internet rapper. He's actually like a real rapper, too, but... Um, um, wait, was this was this a Dan Harmon thing? Well, hey, do you, Jim, do you actually need to, like, pop out and meet your friend? Um, Justin can navigate for that me. That would be cool, actually. Yeah, okay, so where we can hold we on to this thing. I have thing no idea where we're going. No, we should just probably end. No, no, I Sutter Stockton. Yeah, let's end the podcast. Okay. Good, good night. It's a fart sound. <laughs> good night, everybody.